I like to call today's gospel the day in which James and John got the worst deal of their life. Two weeks ago, the big theme was marriage. And the Pharisees came up to Jesus asking them about asking him about whether it was licit for someone to divorce or not. Last week, the great theme was wealth and our relationship with wealth. And we had a rich man asking this question, what do I have to do to be saved? So we've talked about marriage. We've talked about wealth and our relationship with wealth. But today's great theme is how are you meant to exercise authority? The theme of today's gospel is authority and power. So what I intend to do today in this homily is let's walk through the gospel. Let's look at this interaction between James and John, Jesus, the disciples, to be able to understand what does Jesus ask for us who have positions of authority and power between our brothers. So how does the gospel start? James and, and John, the sons of thunder, come to Jesus and they say, we want you to give us what we're going to ask from you. Interesting insight. They make this petition behind the back of the other apostles. They do it in a way where the other apostles cannot listen to what they're asking. Perhaps because they were ashamed of what they were asking. Perhaps because they knew that what, what, they, were, what they were asking for could not be shared with the others, so they wanted the best for themselves. And you know how I see it? Imagine that a dad has a lot of kids. And the kids are starting to think about the inheritance. So one kid comes before the other kids and says, Dad, when you're gone, could you leave me this house for me, please? Without the others finding out? So Jesus, he asked, what do you want me to offer you? So I just imagine Jesus, the disciples coming to him, just the two of them in private saying, we want to ask something from you. And I see Jesus going like, oh gosh, now what's coming? What's coming my way now? What are they going to ask? But Jesus treats them with patience like he normally does. So he says, go ahead. What do you want from me? So they make this strange petition. I think this petition is hard for us to understand. They say, when you come in your glory, we want us to be one at your right and one, and one at your left. What does this mean? How are you meant to understand this petition? Does it mean that when they go to heaven, they have a great throne in heaven? Or does it mean something different? So I think the best way we can explain this is thinking about the King David and how the King David, when he was enthroned, he gave his followers different positions of authority. So think about this. Before King David was enthroned, he was running away from Saul because Saul was, you know, he was decided on killing King David. And King David had his troops. And with his troops, they were like leading a sort of guerrilla war out in the mountains, out in the wild. And the followers of King David, they knew that if they suffered with King David, the persecutions, when King David was enthroned, they would receive positions of authority. So more or less they were saying, we suffer right now, but when it's the time of King David, we'll have our share. It's exactly the same mentality for James and John. They feel that they're going through hardships with Christ. They're walking through Galilee. They're suffering, in a sense, persecution. They're starving sometimes. They're, ha they're, they're, they're having, they're taking their hardships. So their hope is when Jesus becomes king, in the same way that David became king, we want our positions as ministers. We want to have our share. So their mentality is, we suffer with you right now, 
But in what's, when it's your time to be enthroned, we want to have, you know, prime minister and second. We want to be up there with you. And Jesus is going to teach them a beautiful lesson about authority. And here is when we get, I think, to the core of the message of the homily in today's gospel. Jesus is saying, power is not to serve yourself, but to serve others. So I want to give you a couple of examples from the life of the church and the life of the saints that I think that really bring light over, over the teaching that Jesus is today sharing. And I want to start with something interesting. Who knows when the Pope signs a document, what's the title that the Pope takes to himself? Servus Servorum Dei. Servant of the servants of God. He says, I am the least among all the servants of God. And you know who was the Pope who came up with this beautiful expression? St. Gregory the Great. That's how he understood his position of power and service. Servant of the servants of God. So think about this. When people think about organizations and authority, normally what we see is a pyramid, right? So the CEO is the big shot on top, right? He gets to make all the calls. And everybody under, the, uh, under him is under his power. You know... In the mind of Christ, what does the pyramid of the organization look like? The other way around. So in the bottom, you have one. So the pyramid is inverted. So the person who holds the position of power is the person who is meant to be the servant of everyone. Let me share with you a different story. I was reading the life of Joseph Ratzinger. And before he was a pope, he was a seminarian in Germany. And he shared this beautiful story. He said that in his seminary, the great rector of the seminary, who was a brilliant man, you know, with great authority, with great wisdom, Joseph Ratzinger tells us that every day when they had dinner, the rector of the seminary served the soup to every seminarian. And he said that the rector of the seminary made the spiritual reading and had his dinner last while everyone else was having dinner. So again, the one who was in the highest position of power assumed the lowest position of service, serving the soup, doing the reading. There's a beautiful passage from the life of St. Francis Xavier. When St. Francis Xavier, the great missionary, was assigned to take the boat that would lead him to India and then to the east. He went to India as the papal nuncio. He was the representative of the Pope. So before boarding the ship, they told him, Father Francis, we've prepared a great chamber for you in the ship Because since you are the nuncio, it is only right that for a man in your position, not to be with the rest of the people on the boat, but to have a chamber, a chamber for your own. And St. Francis Xavier said, all of the difficulties and all the struggles that the church faces come from that worldly mentality. He said, if I am a servant of God and if I am the papal nuncio, I'm supposed to come into this Both like the last of all. And you know what St. Francis Xavier did? He took to himself to serve and to attend to all the sick in that boat. And guess what? He gained much more respect and authority from everyone than if he had his special chamber. chamber. One last example. And this is really beautiful. It doesn't come from the life of the church or the life of the saints, but it comes from the Navy SEALs. And I was reading about the Navy SEALs that they also have the custom, and they work really well, right? They, they do all these difficult missions. And they say that they have the custom that the person in charge of the platoon is always the person in charge of serving the others. He's the one of tending to the others, serving the food, serving the drinks, whatever is needed. So the one in charge 
is the one who serves. And that's what Jesus is trying to teach us today. The one who has authority doesn't mean that he's in the top of the pyramid making all the calls and being a tyrant over others. But it means that the one who is in authority is in fact at the bottom of the pyramid trying to sustain others. So let me finish this homily with this question. Right now, if you have a position of authority, if you're a father, if you're a mother, if you're a teacher, if in your professional life you have other people under you, to use an expression, how do you serve? Do you understand that your position of authority is meant to be service? Do you take to yourself really to serve, your, to serve yourself last and to make everybody else come first? So what Jesus is saying today is, if you truly want to be number one, if you want to be the greatest, if you want to be the greatest father, the greatest mother, the greatest teacher, the greatest in whatever position of authority you exercise, you know what the formula is. You know what it's meant to look like to be in a position of power. To men, you're meant to be in the bottom of the pyramid. So today that we come to Mass, today that we receive Holy Communion, let us say to the Lord, Lord, if you have given me authority, let me say, serve you and serve others in the way that Jesus meant us to serve others and in the way that he served others, cleaning their feet and dying for them like we've heard today in the gospel.